Hello everybody and welcome to Laurie's Mechanical Marvels and it's now time for What's Broken Now. And I know that all of you will have one burning question. Have I managed to get any more vehicles working this month? Well, the more observant amongst you may have noticed that the blue car behind me has changed slightly. That's right, the 106 is parked up in the shed and the MR2 is back out on the road. And honestly, that's been the main thing we've been working on this month. I've been in America, so we haven't been in the shed as much as we normally would be. And for some reason, everybody else decided they didn't want to be here and fix everything in my absence. They were off doing things like karting. So we haven't done as much as we normally might. But the progress on the MR2 makes me very happy. Right, yeah. Ready? Go, 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 go! Go, go, go! Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's got it. We got it? Yeah, that's got it. What was terrifying was the whole ramp tips up. Yeah, yeah, they do. That's why it is a little bit sketchy. Woohoo! We have now flushed the entire coolant system. A new radiator went in. Oh! Oh, it tastes like antifreeze. It's a familiar taste. Got this sorted. Oh, that's better. Ah, in the face. I think this is a good idea to change this because that is unpleasant coloured. I did it. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> Yeah, it's because the hoses are in the way at the moment. Do you want to, uh, I've got this. Yep. You get the hoses. Uh, let's that out of the way. Right, now it should go up all the way. We worked out why my manifold's leaking. It's because there's a, a lump of weld and nothing. That's not doing anything. Yeah, it is going through. Unlike that other time we were using a drill on things. Oh, that's through. You need to tighten that up. Well done. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, look at us, we are successful human beings. Oh, actually, that's actually quite good. That's not bad, Matt. I'm impressed. We've actually the flattened it from an ugly pile of horrible weld to a fairly clean piece of metal. Yeah, we've actually done what we set up to do. Right, let's... Uh, right that's the last time that's going to happen tonight. There's just not enough space to get one's hand. I hope said how much is easy to work on. I think it was me, wasn't it? I think we've quoted it a couple of times in videos. Yeah. Oh, there's your hand. I've got it. Thank you. That was a moment, wasn't it? That was a moment. That was like, uh, what's that famous painting? Oh, yeah, exactly. God and Adam? Yeah. Yep. I wish I couldn't see Laurie. I just saw a random hand. Can you not see me down here? I can't, really. How, Hi. Did, you, how did you have problems getting this on? This is super easy. I, I hate you. you. You've got a thinner hand than me. I've got fat man hands hanging stuff on from underneath. Was this normal MRT working positions? Yes. It would, would be okay. helpful if it wasn't elevated to drain all the coolant out of it. But then we wouldn't be able to get underneath it, would it? Yeah. God, we need a ramp. We do. We need a ramp. Anyone want to give us a ramp? Yeah, if anyone's got a single phase ramp, now would be the time to donate one to the channel. That is at least on. It's only done up in one hole rather than two, because I can't get the bolt in the other one, but. It's not going anywhere, so that's uh, Matt's been working on putting the cat back onto the rest of the uh, the bat box. So let's uh, hang it up and put it all back together again. Oh! We also took all of the exhaust off and put brand new gaskets in everywhere, which turns out was a total waste of time because it still sounds awful. Once we'd fired it up, having put it all back together again. 
we found it's still leaking from the join between the manifold and the downpipe, which is a brand new one. So the manifold now needs to be replaced because that's leaking. And the catalytic converter, it's leaking on one end of that as well because the flange is just worn in about that thick. So we're going to get rid of the cat and uh, put something else in there. So we've now put all of the exhaust back onto this, which was a very late night the other night, and all of the coolant system has been re-plumbed in. So all that remains is to fill it with some coolant and fire it up and see if it wants to start. Or if it does start, if it will run happily and where the exhaust is leaking from because I cannot for the life of me envision for a single moment that it would have gone as well as we wanted it to. Oh, that's me arm wet. <clears throat> Right, do you want to do the honour of turning it on? Kind of. Go for it. Are the keys on that? The keys on it. Right. Just make sure it is out of gear. Right, this is the big restart after the exhaust goes on and see what coolant happens to the coolant. So we have now successfully, we think, bled up the MR2. We followed the internet instructions. It seems to have drunk actually a fair amount of coolant. And now we're just putting everything back together. So all I need is one last bolt to put the cross brace on. And that also goes onto the, the rear suspension mounting. So Matt, that bolt. Um. Is it that? That, could be, that looks about right, doesn't it? I'm bad. not too sure. That is not the right bolt. I don't know where it is. There's a big pile of stuff down there. Yeah, this was when we were trying to find bolts for other bits and pieces, and then we just parked the super on top because it was late and we were really lazy. It's kind of important we have that bolt because that helps the suspension. Oh, that's the top of the suspension mount. We're not having my MR2 bolts. But we do have another MR2. Oh, we're gonna go nick some bits. We're gonna go nick some bits. It's fine, it's not like it's going anywhere this weekend. Yeah, 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 we're gonna nick some bits. Hello. And between me and Matt, we managed to bleed it back up. And this was a very long winded and slow process. The good news is we succeeded. And it, it works and it runs properly, and we think we've purged all the air out of it because it's not overheating and it's running quite happy. The important thing is that the car works. The other thing to notice is the car only started working from the day before we filmed this video. You see, the MR2 was booked to go to Jap Show up at Santa Pod, which I said a long time ago, yeah, the car will be ready. Well, dear viewer, at the 10th hour before Jap Show, Matt's MR2 did not work, and neither did my MR2. Matt found that he had an ignition problem where somewhere somebody had bodged it in the, in the past and the two ignition wires were touching every time he hit a bump, and mine just wasn't in one piece and had no coolant. And in fact, the rest of the group were quite unsure whether or not my MR2 would make an appearance. Okay. But it did. So, we guys of LMM headed off to Jap Show in our Japanese cars. 
This week, we have come to Jap Show because we have Japanese cars. And I think I'm winning the award having the most scabby MR2 because it has made it. it it, it made it, but I don't think it's the scabbiest car here because a lot of these arrived on the back of a trailer. I mean, yours drove here on its own power for two hours. Yeah, it did, which is quite the accomplishment because as of yesterday, it didn't work and neither did yours. No, mine was broken as well. We had two broken MR2s before coming here. We were very nearly having to scab a lift from people just to get here in time. Trevor, on the other hand, is working fine as normal. Yes, so we're going to go have a look at Trevor's car because you guys haven't seen it before on the channel. So this is my uh, 1998 uh, Toyota Celica GT4. Um, I've had it since January 2018. Uh, it was imported by Top GT um, on their personal import service. Uh, the car's done just over 100,000 miles. Um, it's pretty much stock. It's got an aftermarket exhaust and that's really about it. Um, my intentions are to try and keep the car as stock as possible. Um, and any real changes are just mainly sort of aesthetic or quality of life. Um, could you buy these in the UK or did you have to import them? You could get them in the UK as far as I'm aware. Yeah, you can get them in the UK. I decided to import one as a friend imported his Integra DC5, uh, again through Talk GT, and it was immaculate. Um, and uh, I, mean, I was looking at it, this looks pretty stunning. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And as they don't stop the roads over there, it's uh, a lot more likely you're going to get one without any rust on it at all. Yeah, I was in the in the market buying a car after the uh, misery that my Mark IV Golf caused me. Um, so uh, I was looking around, tried a few import services, but yeah, Talk GT came out the best. The guys there were very good, and uh, for the most part, it's been pretty faultless. I mean, it's a 20-year-old sports car. You're going to have the odd issue with it. But, uh, yeah. There are some really loud cars here. I love it. It's great. <laughs> here's, a, here's a cool car. At some point, we might look at it on the channel at some point, but maybe a little too nice. Chap Show was great. We had a lot of fun. It was wonderful having the car out with other MR2s and chatting to other MR2 owners and just seeing the other cars on display. There were some very nice MR2s, which made me feel quite bad about my own MR2. Some nice GT4s. And a whole host of other things. My favourite being the AutoZam AZ1, which I've always really liked the look of, but I'd never seen one in the flesh before. And I absolutely love it, and it's gone on to my, I must acquire one of these. I'm not sure if I'll actually fit in it. If anybody knows anybody who's got one, and would be happy for me to have a go in it and find out if I actually fit in it, because I know there's it's quite limited head and, oh, what a cool car. We also did an experiment, totally by accident. You know, in some parts of the world, say in Japan, they've done experiments where they put something expensive out and leave it in the town centre and nobody takes it. And I believe some other YouTubers and people have done challenges with cars of how stealable they are by leaving the keys in the ignition. I left my keys in the ignition of my MR2 with the windows down, the T-tops off, my camera in the boot and the car unlocked. Not just for a little bit as I was nearby, but for the entire morning when we all went off to watch cars charging up and down the drag strip. It wasn't until I went to buy a drink and went to reach in my pocket and realised my keys weren't there that I thought, hmm, maybe I left them in the car. I didn't quite realise that I'd left them in the ignition. But how very insulting that nobody thought to steal my MR2. It was there, you could have just got in and driven off, nobody would notice. And I honestly feel slightly offended that nobody did. It, it's not that bad, it, it might well have been worst in show, but uh, in fact it probably was worst in show. But it did get there and it worked. On the other hand, it turns out people at Chap Show are lovely people and don't steal other people's cars. I have identified a whole heap of problems with it which I will now need to sort out, which include the dash is still flickering uh, when it gets dark, the front tyres are not brilliant, it makes a terrible noise from the exhaust as we mentioned, the indicator won't return and randomly makes noise, and the horn is intermittent. So uh, 
there's, there's lots of things we need to do with that. But it did work, and it just, it was so good having the car out. I had the T-tops off, drove it about, and just loved it. Just so nice having the car back on the road. And knowing that occasionally things do leave the shed working. So the other working vehicles, well, the 106, well, it still works. It's in dire need of a service. So having the MR2 out on the road, A, I want to drive it in this very wet and miserable weather that suddenly appeared. And secondly, I want to stop the 106, give it a service, and just give it a break, because the poor thing's been going non-stop for about, well, about nine months now. Apart from that, there's nothing really new with it. The gearbox is still going, it's still got a drive shaft making noise, and there's a whole host of little niggles that I really should sort on it, which hopefully, with another car on the road, I can now do. Genuinely, guys, this is the best thing to ever come out of France. The 106 is a just amazingly brilliant car. And of course, the locomotive. The Rustin 48, well, that's fine. We've discovered it's got a couple of dribbles on it in places, but it's been in regular service at Mid-Suffolk Light Railway. They're using it to do track work and things. And a lot of the time, I have no idea. I just get a message from somebody saying, oh yeah, we used the engine today. Huh? Okay, good. But that's basically fine. And it looks just wonderful trundling up and down the railway. I'm so proud of it every time I see it. Well, there is some big news. And that is that we're only human and there's only so much that we can do. And that I'm an idiot. You see, during Jupiter's brief period of being operational, I booked it into a show to go back to Haverhill where it was stationed during its industrial days at the Industrial Flavors and Fragrances plant. So I need to fix Jupiter. I also, when I had two basically working tractors, agreed to take them to my friend's wedding in August. So I need to get two tractors to be working again. And of course there's the MR2 and the 106 that need to keep working. So we've decided that it's time to prioritize on certain projects, namely Jupiter and the tractors, because they do need to be out for certain events, which means that everything else now is going to take a bit of a back step as we progress forward with everything with the, the major projects. So guys, you might have noticed that the Supra has moved from its home in the Carcoon, especially if you watched our 1K special that came out uh, a few weeks ago. Well, the Carcoon has done its job. Everything in here has become lovely and dry, it no longer smells of damp, and my backside is not getting damp. We had some concerns of how the upholstery would cope with being damp for so long and drying out, but basically everything here in here, you know, but basically everything in here has coped really well and it's recovered fantastically, which makes me very excited for the hope of the project and moving this car forward. Which brings us on to the next thing. We have a lot of projects at the moment, so progress on this is going to be limited. We're not going to attempt to do anything to this bar trying to get it to start again because it died and we think it's probably the relay, because we checked the fuses, but we'll investigate that over the next month and try and get it so it's happy and it's running and we can move it again, because the brakes are sticking and that makes it a lot harder to move and push. We want to do an inspection on the un underside. Yeah. We want to do an inspection on the underside, so we want to get it up on ramps and just see how bad it is underneath. But then we're not going to do anything else to it. We're not going to start stripping this down until we've got some of the other projects finished because we don't really want to have carpets scattered absolutely everywhere. So this one will basically be on hold from a couple of months' time, as we've done the, the stuff I've just mentioned. Which is a shame, but we're only human and there's only so much we can do, so... Yeah. Progress on Supra will be limited. But it is cool, isn't it? I love this. It will go on the road. It will go on the road. It just might be some time. I am really rather dreading lifting this up and having a look underneath it because I really, really want it to live. I want it not to be too bad. I want to take it out on the road because it is gorgeous. The Lotus. Well, we finally made it so there's some actual legroom in the back of the car. And we've done this by removing 
absolutely everything else. Morgan has made his own personal project to strip this car. And it's basically just a shell. We are very rapidly approaching the stage where we can lift it clear from the chassis and work out how on earth we're going to fix the front end of it. We are also debating many fun ideas of maybe making this the driver's position back here, or maybe just deleting the rear seats entirely, because no adult could actually fit in them. We have removed all of the seats, so I'm sitting as low as I possibly could in the seat, and my legs are already pretty much at the handbrake. Matt's very much in favour of putting a big sound system in here. I'm unconvinced at, the stage, at this stage. We kind of realised as well, the shell is actually pretty good on this. Well, this bit of it is. And the conversion that way hasn't been done too badly. It's all... There's a lot of bodging, but it's all pretty good. It's all come apart in a way that we go, oh, I kind of understand where they were coming from. To rebuild it, we're going to do basically what they did, but better. We will continue to do the odd bit to the Lotus. I am very excited to lift the shell, but that will happen in a few months once we have the, the big, more important, time-sensitive projects out of the way. Progress has been quite limited on this. There's been a very minimal amount of wire brushing to just continue progress, but I have met with the chap who thinks he can weld it up. And our basic conversation has been for a lot of the panels, Alla, say here, what we'll do is we'll cut the rust out and then weld a patch on behind onto the good metal because this stuff here is about a millimetre thick. It's very thin metal and we have real concerns of whether or not we can actually weld to it to make a flush piece without blowing the metal. In fact, he has some concerns about actually sticking a plate on the back without blowing the metal, but we have a better chance of success plate on the back and then we'll build it back up with filler to get a nice level body. And that will work on quite a lot of it. There are some places like round here which we're going to have to get new bits manufactured, like this whole wing here. But uh, that will do for, for a lot of the front of the truck. That's how we're going to solve that problem. So at least we've been talking to people and making progress, but yeah, there's not been much progress. Really, and it's gonna it's gonna sit for a bit, unfortunately. I don't know what I broke, but something made up a noise. And the Turbo MR2. Well, we haven't really done anything with that, apart from try to see if it does actually start. That's positive, it will help. So in order to prove that not everything that I touch just fails and breaks, we've got the battery that was on the tractor, some jumper cables, we connect it up to the MR2 to prove that with a good battery, it'll start. Great. So. All the lights on the dash have now powered up and you can hear the fan roaring away. So that's good. Oh, come on. round to the time sensitive projects. Jupiter. Well, I spent a bit of time up in the cab trying to work out what it is I need to do. When Jupiter broke down the other day and we were putting it into the shed in the dark, I became aware that how few of the lights on the dash actually work. Which was to say the battery indicator had a light behind it and nothing else. So I've now Release this so that I can get to all of these and start re removing and replacing bulbs. Of course, being a 1981 machine, they're all an obscure little bulb that I need to go and buy some more. Jupiter also, for some reason, has ah, this that was installed, which is a transmission oil temperature, which I don't think it should have had as it's a manual. This is something that's been put in to fill a gap because it's, it's not plugged in. 
so that's now going to be removed somewhere. I'm sure I've got a blanking plate to go on that. And whilst we're pulling bits off, we're going to take the opportunity to do a bit more wiring. This middle bit here should be a repeater that should flash when the blue lights are flashing. So, but that's equally, it's not tied into anything. Also, I've got some switches that I want to mount in here to be kill switches. Because technically on the road, you should be able to turn the blues and twos off so you can't access them. So I'm going to put in a couple of kill switches there and there so that when I press these buttons, if they're off, nothing happens. And so the blues and twos are immobilized when it's on the road. It should be done. The other thing that we discovered when it was out is it's got a diesel leak. When it's running, there's a constant drip, drip, drip from the engine. And I think it's the fuel returns which are down there, which means I need to take the fuel lines off, off the pump itself that go to the cylinders, or to the injectors, to be able to get to because it's underneath everything and my large hand will not fit between them. So all I can do now is wait for the airlines to turn up and go and find myself some really obscure little screwing bulbs and some wires to do the rest of the electronic stuff. That's about it. I'm sorry guys, there is literally nothing else I can do with the truck at the moment. The Massey Ferguson 35. I have had a very long, very drawn out, very back and forth, going round in circles conversation with the people who supplied me the center dash dial for the 35, which basically came back of, have you ordered the right one? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Have you got a picture of the one you took out? Yes. Was that working? No. Well, maybe that was the wrong one. I don't think so. I think it's the original one, judging on the condition. Oh, well, we don't have these brake very often. Yes, but it clearly does not work. It turns out there is a, a uh, dial that spins clockwise and one that spins counterclockwise. I have ordered the clockwise one because it is the correct one for my tractor. I am not thrilled with the way the seller has dealt with this situation. It has taken far too long and been really, really taxing. It shouldn't have been this hard. That basically is the progress on the 35. I've sent back the dodgy bit and done a bit more wire brushing. The tractor is actually very nearly back on the road. We need to finish wire brushing the bits that need wire brushing, slap some new paint on it and wire up the lights. Oh, and I need a new set of rear tyres because they, they're knackered. Which brings us around to Jeb, the International. I had one of my friends who is very good at old diesels come and look at it and it would not even turn over. So we've concluded that the starter has died. So we set about taking out the starter. Ah, right, so uh, you join me underneath Jeb, the International B275, because not only does it not run, it now doesn't start. So we can only assume that the, the starter is packed up or something's come loose inside the, the starter. So um, yes, time to disassemble. That's too loose and uh, see what happens. We just connect a battery object directly out of the... So we think the uh, end connection has come loose. Oh God. Oh God, am I easy? Um, and, uh, as the end connections come loose, uh, we think that that's the problem, because if you wiggle the the cable going in, occasionally it will fire up. So it's either that or the solenoid, and we don't think it's the solenoid. Other way around? <laughs> That's not turning, is it, Laurie? It's not turning, no. Uh, it's just it's shorting. It's the other way around. It just looks like it's shorting out. Mm. We've uh, done a thorough investigation of the starter, and we've come to the conclusion that it is, in fact... Um, it was broken. Yeah, yeah, it's... It doesn't seem to want to, it just sparks. I mean, we might be doing it wrong, but... Um, there's probably a, I wouldn't even say there's a broken connection there. There's power's clearly getting from there to there. It's just, this is not turning, so something is not working. I don't think, I don't think we're missing anything. Because it should just fire and engage. So anyway, we're gonna just take it off to a specialist to have a look at it. And then the engine will turn over on Jeb. And it'll still be broken. And it'll still be broken. 
gasket because we do think the head gasket has gone. I'm pretty sure the head gasket's gone. Yes, there's probably water in at least one of the cylinders, if not all of them at this point. Well, I, I reckon it's also got really low compression, so it's probably it might actually have to be a full engine rebuild on it. By next month? No. No, that's not. It's not going to happen, is it? No. No. Yep. Nope. Continuing on with the general theme of uh, this week's what's broken now. Everything remains to be broken. Should we try to fix something? Once we have some other projects out of the way, say Jupiter sorted and the Massey 35 sorted, I will then lift the head on this tractor. I'm putting it off because I fear it's going to be a massive great job and I really would like to have one other vehicle, one other tractor working before we start getting stuck into that because I don't know what's wrong with it and it's, it's just going to be a terrible, terrible thing and I have a horrible feeling it's going to end up needing the entire engine rebuild. Roll on August. Oh, and we need to fix the steering because the steering is dire. And the brakes, the brakes are also dire. Oh, there's so much to do on that tractor. Why did I agree to take it to a wedding? Oh, God. And on that high note, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and share with your friends. And yeah, let us know how we go and give us some emotional and moral support for trying to fix all this lot and to all of you who have subscribed thank you again we really really appreciate it and thank you all so much for helping us to hit 1000 subscribers we really feel it's kind of a bit of vindication for the channel and it, it really helps all of us feel more excited about what we're doing to make good quality and exciting content for you guys so give yourself a pat on the back thanks a lot and hopefully this time next month, we might have something else working. But uh, I guess you have to tune in then and have a look. In the meantime, if you haven't already seen it, click over here for the 1K special, where we find out what does actually start in the shed. Or click down here for what happened last week, or last month even. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again soon. Oh. There's so much to do, so many vehicles to fix.